Hi everyone uh, and welcome back. Um, so I wanted to show you some cool new updates I've made to the Atom Probe code for uh, analyzing Atom Probe data in MATLAB. Um, and there is actually a couple of new things that I think are going to be really, really useful. And uh, the first things I want to show you is some updates to the load Atom Probe uh, kind of stuff that I've already shown in the last video. And the next thing I want to show is actually an ISO surface widget thing that I've programmed that I hope will help every one of you do nice ISO surface in MATLAB, ISO surfaces in MATLAB for your own custom analysis. And then uh, I will give you a quick preview in a separate video. Actually, I will give you a quick preview on some of the ranging stuff I've uploaded, which is I would consider in beta because there is um, one or two little bugs that I'll show you um, that probably and it's going to be very important for many of you but anyway so um, for the analysis of course we'll load in some uh, data again and I just use some uh, super alloy data um, that I have kicking around just some CMS X4 with a couple of gamma and gamma primes uh, about 10 million atoms I've tested it I've tested a code on uh, uh, data sets with about up to 50 million atoms uh, works perfectly fine and uh, then last week we already had the, or last time we already had the um, read range command, which now allows you to read in RRNG from uh, um, RRNG from Ivers data. And again, we've got the stupid thing that MATLAB is case sensitive. Anything, anyway, can't do much about that. Uh, and the first update I want to show you is that now you can actually. Uh, you can actually plot the mass spectrum including the ranges. So here, this the new the updated plot mass spectrum command now allows you to uh, put in which POS file you want to do, do the range the, the, the plot the, the mass spectrum for, uh, what the binning is supposed to be, the mass to charge binning in Dalton's, and then you can add some ranges. And what you get as the output is um, what you get as the output is the uh, handle of the mass spectrum plot and when we get to ranging different video uh, this will become important anyway if you do that a uh, very quick plot so you can see you'll get you know you get a plot with all the different ranges and they're all labeled so this ranging file is not really it's not really uh, seen a lot of love so there's a couple of peaks uh, that are probably wrong and a couple of peaks that are uh, probably at the wrong spot uh, anyway does the drawing pretty nicely and in the next video, I'll show you how to do ranging based on that. Uh, and the next thing I want to show you is we had the decompose uh, post by range. In a decompose post by range, I've changed the behavior slightly. Um, and the behavior now is that the, I mean, not the behavior itself, what I've changed is actually how it names the variables. It will name the variables now by variable name of the pos underscore and then whatever the naming is going to be as so aluminium boron carbon whatever all range uh, so they're they're all in a row in your workspace before you know i had the uh, i put the type first and then underscore dot positions and it's always pos in this case now if i would go for example decompose by range uh, sorry and call it i don't know test equals POS, right? So we've got a new variable, just a copy of the POS. Uh, and if I decompose it now, uh, decompose it now, then you'll see it's no longer called POS, it's called test. And we've got all of the variables in, uh, uh, in uh, one thing here. And this makes working, uh, this makes everything just a little bit clean in the workspace. Okay. Uh, so what I wanted to show you is actually how to do isosurfaces. And isosurfaces in MATLAB are relatively simple because they're built in. And I've already introduced uh, code uh, to do some voxel binning of data from Atom Probe um, that can be used for that. But I think it was a little bit, well, it was very manual, but highly flexible. But now what I've added is the isosurface widget. So if the volumetrics folder is not on your path, now is the time to put it on your path, okay? And if you use the isosurface widget, 
then you can, for example, now if I want to calculate an isosurface for a uh, for aluminium, I'll just take the POS underscore aluminium from here. Uh, then, so essentially, a uh, concentration field is number of atoms of a certain species or that interest you divided by number of atoms of another species. Or if you so if you want to have a percentage, essentially, you'll go. Um, you know, maybe if you want aluminium and nickel, you could go post aluminium and put it together with post nickel uh, divided by all range. But maybe you want to have uh, stoichiometry, isosurfaces, and still things like that. So this is uh, this is the um, this is the numerator, and this is the denominator. Okay. Then we have the voxel size in nanometers. Uh, they are isotropic voxels. Uh, you can also give non-isotropic voxels. And then we have AX, and AX is the axis it will plot it into. So for now, I don't have one where I pl want to plot it into, so I can remove that, and it will pl uh, uh, pop up with its own figure. Okay. So you can see here. We've got the figure where we have the isosurface, which by now, because it's at a ridiculous value, uh, is not particularly helpful. Uh, but here you see the line where our iso value is, and you can see uh, we've probably got two faces. Um, oh, sorry, I should explain what the individual things mean in the uh, widget. So, uh, first of all, we've got a plot of frequency of occurrence of a certain iso value. Um, versus the range of values. So essentially a histogram of the values. And if you've got two phases, chances are that one phase is a different concentration than the other, and that's what we see here. Then below we've got a slider that we can use to actually drag the ISO value to where we want it to be. Makes sense, right? Now we've got a nice ISO value here. Uh, but if we want to have a more precise value, we can say, okay, I want it to be 9%, so 0 0.09 is 9% because it doesn't go by percent because it not always is. And then press enter and then it will be exactly 9%, right? So you can type it in, you can either use the slider or type it in, it does the same thing. Uh, next thing you can do is you can change the color. I think what that does is pretty obvious and for some reason I sometimes get problems with that. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter too much. You know what color changing uh, looks like. Uh, the next thing is actually pretty important, and it's called for filter patch size. So what you see here is that we've got a lot of loose parts of isosurface floating around uh, due to counting statistics. A lot of those actually near the surface. And what we can do with that, we can filter any of those patches that are smaller than 100 vertices. So smaller than 100 corner points making up the, the patch. And if we do that, you can see we only end up with the three big ones. Okay. Of course, you might want to change that. Um, you might want to change that depending on uh, how small uh, precipitates or whatever you have in there. So sometimes a hundred, you know, as a filter size can be a little bit too large. So if you think that uh, wasn't the right thing to do, any time you drag the slider, it will re-update. Okay. Um, and uh, if you're happy with the ISO surface and you want to use it for uh, analysis. What you can do is, and I'll just make a little space here so you can see what happens. Uh, you can press create variable, and what that does is just drop a variable called isosurf zero, because I can't have decimal points, it's underscore zero zero eight six four, so eight point six four percent isosurface uh, as a struct. Um, and this struct contains the vertex and the face value, so no color information or anything. That's why the coloring is actually not that important. It's just for you to properly be able to see where things are. Um, yeah, and you can use that to do, for example, uh, calculations of volumes or uh, uh, do proxi uh, proximity histograms and so on and so forth. Uh, but of course, you might want to choose specific uh, interfaces, and to do that, you can press the split surfaces button, and what that does is it gives you uh, the loose parts of the surfaces, right? So the non-connected parts of the surfaces, uh, they're all colored, okay? They're all individually colored. If you want to know which one's which, you can actually use the uh, 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 use a legend on the plot, and it tells you, okay, 
red one is the number one, uh, blue, uh, green one is the number two, and blue one is the number three. Um, and if I now go uh, create variable, you can see is the variables overwritten, and now we've got three structs. It's essentially one per each of the each of the loose parts. So um, of course you m might want to revert the whole process again, and same thing as before. If you drag the slider again, we're back to square one. Of course, we can refilter and split again, and we get where we were just before. Um, but you might want to choose individual patches, and you can actually do that by just using the MATLAB selection tool and uh, selecting whichever patches you want to use. Okay, so maybe you want to use this one and this one, or maybe you want to use uh, just the red one, or just the green one, or just the blue one. Okay. With three, it's easy. With three, you can just go out. A green one's number two, and I'll pull out number two. Um, but if you have a hundred in there, you might want to mark them. Uh, and if you do that, and you uh, press create variable, you see you get another variable. And this other variable, so now we've got the isoserve zero, zero, blah, whatever. And the other variable just tells you which ones were selected, which makes picking the one that, that you want very easy because it's just. Uh, test, uh, so a test would be the output, just for testing, equals this variable uh, indexed by this variable, and then our test would be just that one, right? Uh, and this makes it relatively easy to, uh, with the logical indexing to uh, do things where you pick certain ISO surfaces and do certain things with it. Um, the ISO surface widget, by the way, is not limited to. Uh, this is all. Uh, by the way, this is always just a simple MATLAB plot, so you can save it as a plot and then use it for visualization purposes or whatever. But what I want to show you is actually you can do that together with the uh, visualization. Okay, so I can, for example, go. Uh, so I create a plot handle every time I do the plotting, and the you don't have to worry about why I create a separate variable for the axis I plot in. Um, oh, actually I can show you. Anyway, uh, so I can plot the APT data, okay, of the aluminium, and I want to plot a hundred thousand points. Uh, let's go 0 0.1, which means 10% of the points. Uh, pull the coloring from the range file, and I want them to be four dots large. You can, by the way, also uh, color uh, use the color information from um, some coloring list from some color scheme. So if you go into the updated uh, mass spec tools uh, resources, and you can see there's random color scheme, which is just random colors. And you can see. For all of the elements, I've just randomly populated it. But if you like certain colors for like certain elements in maybe a certain projects, then you can create a variable like that as well and use it for coloring. But now I'm just going to use the one in the range file. Of course, this gives me gives me a, a nice uh, 3D plot like before. And what I've added is now the functionality to plot more than one in. Uh, more than one species, and that's why I need, what I need the axis for, okay? And now we've got both aluminium and chromium plotted in here, and if you go into the legend, it will also show you which one's which, okay? So if you later make that a uh, figure in a paper, it's fairly easy to just get the legend here. and. The next thing, and that's what that's the really cool thing about it, is now if you call the ISO surface widget, and now we use the axis, it will actually plot the ISO surface into that figure. So I can, for example, go and create the ISO surface, and there we go. So fill the patch size again, and all the funky things that I showed you before. Are still possible in the uh, it, uh, in the uh, plot together with the dots. It makes visualization in MATLAB very appealing, very quick, and very flexible. Uh, 
the picking of individual surfaces also works in a plot like this but I wouldn't recommend it because it will be a mess whether you pick the the, 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 the dots of the individual atoms or if you pick uh, the ice surface or whatever if you if you want to pick certain surfaces it's better to plot it in its own plot okay if you want later of course you can go and, and plot things into that plot yeah, so um, anyway, that's the new isosurface widget and some of the updates on the plotting tools. And I hope that is of help to all of you. And uh, I wish you a great time doing analysis in MATLAB of isosurfaces and other things in Atom Probe.